All right, I'm gonna put this right here up here on top of the safe right here and hope that it picks up everything I say. What I want to do, I want to hold, hold, wait, wait a minute now, hold on, got a cord, uh, uh, things want to pull it off of there, so let's fix it when it won't pull off there. At any rate, what I want to talk about here, I want to make a little video talking about uh, the time that uh, a Mexican national from Mexico tried to fulfill a contract to kill me that he thought would get him into the Mexican Mafia. That contract was placed by a, name, a man named Johnny Kano. Johnny Kano is a man who did 28 and a half years of his life in TDC, Texas Department of Corrections Pen Penitentiary System. He had gotten out and he had moved to Tennessee, a place called uh, Lafayette, Tennessee, or Lafayette, Tennessee, as pronounced by the locals there. And he had gotten him a girlfriend who had a 15-year-old daughter, okay? So, Johnny, I had met him through the Mexicans, like I said, all these Mexicans, man, I was cutting and spiking tobacco with them, okay? And all them, they all speak me uh, Mexican, you know, like I said, Johnny Kano, he's a big-time captain in the TS, whatever you want to say, okay? Okay, but anyway, I digress, let me get back. Anyway, Johnny had this girlfriend, who had a 15-year-old daughter, okay? One day, I got a call, and the 15-year-old, Bob, 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 can you help me, can you help me? Johnny's killing my mama. So me, at this point in time in my life, was already on trial for aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury, huh? <laughs> so the only thing I could do was call the sheriff and send the sheriff of Macon County, Tennessee over there. I was in Clay County. So I called Macon County and sent the Macon County Sheriff over there, who conducted his investigation. His investigation revealed as follows. The uh, Johnny Kano had been sexually active with the 15-year-old girl, telling her that if she ever told her mama, he would kill her. He would kill her mama. So the 15-year-old girl had gotten pregnant. So... Johnny, you know, the 15-year-old had to tell mom, mom, you know, I'm pregnant, this is what's been going on. So here this particular day, Johnny was trying to fulfill what he told that little girl he would do. So they ended up charging Johnny Kano with like 28 counts of statutory rape. They gave him like a $3 million bond. Now, within two or three days, one of the gang members they had there came over to me and he said, listen, man, Johnny's son is coming from Corpus Christi, Texas. He's coming from by bus to burn your house down. He's coming by bus. He'll be coming in in Lebanon, Tennessee at this time, at this bus station, on this bus. And I said, all right, man, I appreciate that information, okay? <laughs> yeah. So what I did on this particular day was I went to the bus station. I watched Johnny's family, you know, the crime family, picking this boy up, okay? That's right, I watched them pick them up, and I followed them where they went. They took him to a family restaurant where they went to have their first meal when this boy arrived, and I walked into that restaurant, and I walked over to their table, and I just <clears throat> nudged myself right next to that boy. And I said, so now you the boy that's here to burn my house down. I said, let me tell you something, when it happens, don't worry about the police, because I'm coming for you. So now they knew they could not burn my house down. So, a few days go by, one of the Mexicans that I had cut and spiked tobacco with, I had brought him to the house, we had drank together, we had uh, barbecued together, you understand, he came to me. And he said, comes to my house and he knocks on my door, and he comes and says, come here, I want to talk to you, so come outside with him. And he said, preacher, I got to tell you something. He called me preacher because I had seen him do very bad things. And I hit him with the Bible and told him he needed to read it. See? But I digressed. He said, Preacher, I got to tell you something. He said, I got the contract to kill you. So, me knowing the type of people that I'm actually dealing with, some of you may be stupid and not understand. Okay? I know what kind of people I'm dealing with. So, I thought about it for a minute. I said, I'll tell you what. I said, as long as you don't let me see it coming, you're doing me a favor. 
I send them my family, on the other hand. They're going to see you in prison for the next 20 years or so. Yeah. Okay. So time went on, time went on, and then uh, Johnny's family, they was wanting to move. They asked me, can you help me move? Can you help us move? I said, yeah, okay. But make no mistake, over the two weeks or so that went on, I gave them every opportunity to feel what they said they was going to do. I went and cut and spiked tobacco with these people, and they was talking shit in Spanish how they was going to do it, but none of them tried, okay? We all got knives and hatchets out there. Come on, and spikes, man. If you know about cutting and spiking the back, we're really to kill somebody with that stuff. But no, they said, hey, we're moving on this day. Come help us move. So I said, okay, I'm going to come help you move because I want you out of my county anyway. Okay? So I come up there this day. And as I come up, I get out of my van. I come up, and the one, the Mexican that has the contract to kill me, he walks over to me with a 357 Magnum, clip and sticks it on my chest. And he says, hey, he say, you tell the police I sell cocaine. I said, dude, do you sell cocaine? He said, no. I said, well, all right then. So he put the gun back in his pants. This other kid, the 19-year-old, the one I had already, uh, talked to in the restaurant. I had seen him beat up his little girlfriend, so I had told the police about it. I ain't gonna lie. I told the police that boy beat up that girl. Okay, so we're all standing there now. The one Mexican put the 357 back in his pants, right? The 19-year-old there, he says something to the Mexican in Spanish real quick, and then he looks at me and he says, all I'm saying is I don't appreciate you telling the police I beat my girl. I said, yeah, that's right, I told the police you beat your girl. Why don't you beat me like you beat her? And when I said that, he reached for that gun. And when he reached for that gun, I said, you know what, I'll kill you before you get it. And I grabbed him and I took him into a technique that I could have killed him, but I have control, so I did not kill him. I exercised control and put him to sleep quick. And as I did, he went to sleep quick. I should have went on and broke his neck, but I didn't because I have the control. But... I had this boy in my arms. I'm not going to show you the exact technique because I don't want you to know. That Mexican pulled that 357 Magnum. He said, you let him go. Click. Boom. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. So now all I can tell you is that there was a big fight that ensued. I fell back. I dropped that boy. I realized what? I'm alive. That Mexican realized I was alive, his eyeballs popped out his head. And he clicked and took aim to take a second shot. The boy, the son of the captain of the TS, was in front of me. And I used him for a human shield. When I used him for a human shield, that Mexican came over the top with that gun. Boof! And as soon as he hit me, that boy dropped. And I took the gun. Boom! 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 While that was happening, I got cut. Actually, oh yeah, I <laughs> sure did. At any rate, there was a big fight. All I can tell you is I'm still standing here talking to you. Now, that is the time the Mexican national from Mexico tried to fulfill the contract to take my life. 